In this quick video tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can deform geometry using the PCG framework within Blueprints and Unreal 5.2. So you can create live deformers like this. If I click on this geometry, I have the ability to twist it, bend it, even change the shaping or positioning of that bend as well. Or if you have a twist or something and you run out of geometry, you'll be able to also add tessellation. So I can add more levels of subdivisions to make those edges now smooth instead of faceted with this tessellation control. So to begin, brand new scene, we're going to go to edit, plugins, we're going to search for procedural and make sure we have a procedural content generation framework enabled. Once you've done that, we're going to right click, create a new blueprint class. Our blueprint class is going to be a dynamic mesh. So we're going to search dynamic mesh and choose a dynamic mesh actor. Once we've done that, we'll give it a name. So I'm just going to call it BP for blueprint underscore geo deformer or whatever you want to call it. And we'll open it up and we have our empty blueprint with just a dynamic mesh component. And what we're going to do is go to the construction script and start adding our deformers in here. Now, before we can add our deformers, we have to get some sort of mesh we want to deform. So I'm going to add a variable for our input mesh. I'm going to change its type to a static mesh reference. So I'll type static mesh and go down here to static mesh object reference. I'll turn the eye on so that we can see its visibility or input this mesh through the UI when we drop this blueprint in our scene. And we'll give this a name of something like input mesh. And I'll take that input mesh, I'll get the input that we plug in there, and we're going to apply a warp to it. But before doing that, we have to copy it into our dynamic mesh component so we could deform it. So what I'll do next on the construction script is drag out from this little execution pin and add a get dynamic mesh. So I'll do get dynamic mesh and that will automatically get our dynamic mesh component here. And that is it. And the next thing I want to do is copy our input mesh into that dynamic mesh component. So what we'll do is drag out that execution graph or pin here and in our graph search for copy mesh from static mesh and the mesh you want to copy is our input mesh we want to copy it to our dynamic mesh and there we go now we've copied our mesh into this dynamic mesh component so now we can deform it by taking if this all succeeds we can add a warp and there's a bunch of warps here there's a bend a flare a math a twist warp i'll use a twist warp and with the twist warp you select the target mesh you want to twist so that will be our dynamic mesh and then how much we twist it angle wise and how far that extent of the twist ex extends so we want controls for both of these so we'll add two more variables set their type to float so it matches float is like a, a number with decimal places we'll turn the eye to on or the visibility to on and we'll rename these to angle and extent and we'll both fetch those values so get angle get extent and connect those right up so angle extent and that's it if we compile save drop this in our viewport throw in our mesh to the input mesh here there it is and if i deform it with like angle 90 degrees extent 50 there we go it's twisting if I do 360 degrees, well, that twists a bunch in a very small area. If I extend that extent, then it twists in a further amount. Now, problem is we're running out of geometry. It's becoming faceted, and also our material is not being assigned correctly. Our material looks like it's the world grid material. It's not fetching my material from my input mesh. To fix that, I'm going to open up the blueprint, and what we're going to do is go here to our apply twist warp to mesh. So first to deal with the material, what we're going to do is get our material from our input mesh. So I'll take the input mesh, get material, and then what I'll do is I'll create another node to assign the material to this new warped mesh. So to do that, what we'll end up doing is drag this out, search for set material, dynamic mesh component, and it will fetch our dynamic mesh component and we'll just connect up that material. So now if I were to compile and save that, if we look at this, okay, now it has the correct material. Now, what about the tessellation? Well, if we want to add tessellation control, we're going to have to go back in here and apply that tessellation before we do the warp. So what I'll do is I'll take this warp, I'll take our stuff from here on, 
drag it out so we have a bit more space in between these two nodes, between our copy mesh from static mesh and our warp. And what we'll do is instead of connecting this up, we're going to connect the success to a tessellation node. So we're going to go in here and we're going to search for tessellation. And you can see there's a different types of tessellation you can apply. We'll just do uniform for now. And we're apply tessellation. So it subdivides it or adds more geometry to it. And then we'll apply the warp and we'll apply that warp to our new tessellated mesh. Now, target mesh for the tessellation, we're going to have to connect that up as well. That'll be our dynamic mesh. And then tessellation level, we'll have to probably add a control for that. So that will just be a integer, a whole number control. And uh, we'll call it maybe tessellation, toggle the visibility on, get that value, and put it into there. And by default, it can be zero. We'll compile it, make sure it's zero, save. And now let's take a look. There we go, we have it, but now we have this new control, tessellation. One, two, three, four, there we go. Now we have it more tessellated, and it kind of handles that twist a little bit better now. And we can extend that twist up. Now it might be nice to have a bit of a, a marker of where this twist is happening. And maybe we want to be able to rotate that twist, so it's twisting a different direction or something. Now we can do that in our blueprint. We can go back into our blueprint here and we can add control to the twist orientation or where the twist is actually happening. Now to do that, one thing that we're going to need to maybe have is something that will mark our position or show us in the editor of where that location is, where the twist is happening. So I can go here and just add something like an arrow. There we go. And I can get that arrow and I can apply a transform to it. And that transform can go to the same transforms that we'll use to move this twist location around. So the next thing that we're going to do now is add another variable to control the position or the orientation of where that twist happens. So that's going to be important to, to add. So I'm going to go here and add. I'm going to change its type for the location to a vector. And I'm going to call it deformer location. And I'll go to this twist orientation here and split that. And you can see there's actually two things. There's twist orientation location and also rotation. So maybe we'll add one more variable. We'll make that type match this one, which that color is a rotator. So we'll just add a rotator. Rotator, there it is. And I'll toggle the eye to be visible for both of these. And I'll give that a new name called deformer rotation. We'll drag both these in here, get the location, get the rotation, connect them up like that. Easy. There's all our controls. Nothing really special. Now the only thing is we want to make sure that we also move our arrow to that same location so that it can show us a visible marking of where that is happening. So easy way of doing that is pretty much just applying a transform. So I can go in here and drag out my arrow and do a transform. I want to do a relative. So we'll set relative transform and we're going to connect that up. So we're going to have to make a little bit more room here. And this one thing with blueprints, you always want to spread things out a bit more. Otherwise, it's going to get very challenging to add things. So I'll select all this, drag it out just to give us a bit of room here. And then what I'll do is in between our copy from static mesh and our applied tessellation, I'll set the transform of that arrow. So we'll just replace this node to be in the center. And we'll set the arrow here. And we'll set its deformer location as its new spot that it will move to. 
and that's really it. So that will be moving our arrow. So we have a bit of a visible marker of where that twist position is happening. And after we've done that, we can save this, compile, save. And now we see an arrow here of where that twist is happening. So if I go in here and set my deformer location to like 50, well, then the arrow moves up and I know that's where the twist is happening from. So if I were to say, I want this to twist in a smaller area, when I change that extent value that I have here, I know it's gonna change the extent of where the twist is happening from this point where the arrow is and on. So if I were to change the extent to something like 50, there we go. So now we have a little bit of a marker and you can definitely improve this. If you've liked this video, if you learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, press the bell button to be notified of future videos. And if you're part of the Patreon, you'll also get access to the PDF for this video, which goes over all the steps we covered in this video and a little bit more. And if you're interested in the Patreon, check it out in the description below. Right now for the main tier there, the Vertex here, which gives you access to all these PDFs, about 41 of them, which will keep being added to as I create new videos, is currently only $2, but there's a limited number of spots in that tier. Once that tier runs out, it'll be $5 a month for these same PDFs. So if you get in early, if you get in now, you'll be able to retain that pricing of only $2 a month for all these PDFs that I'll keep adding to. And don't forget to comment below and let me know what other videos, what other content you'd like to see.